In this section, we're going to have a look at how indices relate to square roots, which have a symbol like this, and cube roots, which is very similar, but has a three there, a cube root. Now, in order to show that the square root of six all squared is equal to six, you really need to use a calculator. And the buttons that you've got to look for are, first of all, in this case, the square root button. It will look something like this. That's how it is on my calculator. And you'll also need to use the power button, which looks like this, or something like this on your calculator. And if you put in the square root of six here, and then square it with this one, your answer, when it comes out, will in fact be six. Now using our index laws, we can apply them in this way. We know that when we've got a number to a power raised to another power, then we multiply. It doesn't matter if it's a fraction, doesn't matter what it is, we multiply them together. So these get multiplied together. And when I do this, the half times two is one. And as we know, six to the power of one is six. So that's how we can show this. Now the point about this whole exercise is to show that if the square root of 6, when we square that, gives us 6, and if 6 to the half, when we square that, also gives us 6, then if this is true, which it is, then that means that this here, square root of 6, must equal 6 to the half. And in fact, that's the rule or the symbols that we need to learn when we get a square root and we want to change it to index form. So if we have any number and a square root sign with it, it's exactly the same as the a becoming the base and we write it to the power of a half. We can then use this law or this rule or way of writing things to show what these expressions are in index form. So using our rule, we can say that this must be 23 to the half because it's the square root of 23. These are identical. You can check them with your calculator. This one you can't check with a calculator because it's not a number. But we would say that this would be t to the half, just another way of writing it. Now it's very important to look at the difference between these two expressions here. What is the difference between them? Well, this one has the square root sign, but the seven is multiplied by the t, and it's inside the square root sign. Whereas this one, we've got seven outside the square root sign, so it's only the t that has the square root. So when we work this one out, we could say then that the whole thing, that's 7 times t, must be to the half. And the rule is that there's a 1 there and a 1 there. We multiply both of these by a half and we get 7 to the 1 times the half. That's the 1 times the half. And then we get times the whole thing. This is t, which is to the 1. There it is there times a half as well. So when we simplify this down, we get 7 to the half, t to the half. So it's very important to notice that when we find the square root of a number, it's both the square root of 7 and the square root of t, and there's our final expression. Of course, we can simply write it like this. To summarize it, it simply means that when I've got a half out here, both the 7 and the t are to the power of a half. Whereas in this question, it is only the t that is to the power of a half, not the 7, because it doesn't come inside the square root sign. So our final expression will look like this. And you'll notice that the 7 never has a square root, whereas here it does. That's a very important thing to notice the difference. In these examples, we need to write down the meaning of these particular expressions. The first one 
is reasonably straightforward. We just simply remember that if we have a to the half, it's exactly the same as the square root of a. That's the way we're going to write it. So 5 to the half is exactly the same as the square root of 5. In this example, it's very important to see the difference between these two expressions. In this one, the z and the 7 are inside the brackets, and therefore when we write this out, both of them will be inside the square root sign. Whereas here, you'll notice that it's probably best to write these out like this in expanded form. And you'll notice then that the 7 is not influenced by the square root sign. Only the z is. And we can then finally write these together and drop the time sign, even though we do know that it is in there. The same thing occurs with the cube root. Once again, it's important to check this with your calculator. And you'll find that when you put this into your calculator, and you're going to need to find this key to do it, that looks something like this on, on everybody's calculator. You'll also need to use the power key again. But once you put this into your calculator, you'll find that the cubed root of 5 to the power of 3 actually does turn out to be 5. When I apply my index laws, once again, I multiply the power outside the bracket with the power inside the bracket. And a third of 3 is 1. That gives me 5 to the power of 1, which is equal to 5. And that means, therefore, that if this, the cube root of 5, all cubed, equals 5, and if 5 to the third, all cubed, also equals 5, that means that the things inside the brackets must be the same. So we can say, therefore, the cube root of 5 is exactly the same as 5 to the power of a third. And so the rule that we learn is that if you have the cube root of any letter, that could be any number, that is exactly the same as the base a to the power of the third. Writing these in index form, this would be 7 to the third. This one would be e to the third. And without going into too many details, you should now see that this would be 4z to the third. Whereas this one, the 4, is separate from the cube root. And so the answer is 4, and only z is to the third. And we can drop the time sign and write it like this, but we must remember that the 4 is not to the third, only the z. So what do these mean? Well, this is just reversing our rule. This would be the cube root of 8. So it's reversing it. This would be the cube root of n. This would be, now notice the 5x is in the bracket, so the third influences both of those, so it would be the cube root of the whole of 5x. Whereas in D, if I separate it like this, first of all, makes it a little easier, the 5 is not influenced by the third, just the x. So that's the cube root of x. And then we can drop the time sign and move them together. And only the x has the cube root, not the 5.